Okay, so I am about to change your glutes life. If you have been training glutes and you have not been seeing any changes, no booty, the booty is still giving skinny booty, basically. <laughs> and you're worried and you're like, what am I doing wrong? I'm feeling it in all the wrong places. Why does my lower back hurt? I'm about to change your glutes life, okay? Stick with me. We're going to start off with RDLs. And it is honestly my most favorite glute exercise because I started doing this exercise about a year ago and in a couple of months, sister had a booty, period. So you're going to want to include this. So with the RDL, what you want to do, you want to have your feet shoulder width apart. Now, when it comes to this exercise, this is a, an, a hip hinge exercise. So you don't want to use your spine or your back to initiate the movement. You want to use your glutes or your hips to initiate the movement. Now, you don't want to arch your back because that's when you get the lower back pain. That's why you're feeling it in your back instead of your glutes. So you want to tuck in your pelvis before you perform the movement. Tuck in your pelvis and then do the movement. So keeping the dumbbells or the barbell as close to your body as possible. I like to have it on my sides and not at the front because I feel it better. And what you want to also focus on is bracing your core before you do the movement. Bracing your core does not mean sucking in. Okay, It more for the most part means <laughs> pushing out. And then perform the exercise. You're going to have a bend in the knees because that's what allows us to focus all the tension in that booty, okay? If you don't bend your knees, you're going to feel it in your hamstrings. We don't want to feel it in our hamstrings. We want to feel it in our glutes. So you're going to bend your knees as well as make sure that your spine is neutral. So don't do it where you have your neck in this position because I see quite a lot of this. This is why you have neck pain and your back also hurts. You want to make sure that you're keeping your spine neutral for the whole movement as well as not looking at yourself in the mirror this way because your spine is not neutral in this position okay so imagining that there's a wall behind you you can practice by the wall you're going to drive your hips or your glutes your booty towards that wall and come back and when you can no longer go any more backwards you have reached your range of motion so now you can drive back up if this is difficult i would advise practicing with a resistance band so you can put it this way and this is what helped me to kind of get the movement and start feeling it in my glutes so with these cues and tips you should feel it in your glutes keep practicing it the more you practice it the more you get it when you don't practice it and you avoid the exercise that's when you're gonna have skinny booty now <laughs> we don't want skinny booty so you gotta get that work in practice with the resistance band then move on to the dumbbells as well as start with a lower weight it doesn't have to be heavy from get go and lastly try to think of it as a standing hip thrust if you're on my programs you already know we have these in back to back baby because we're about to get this glute work period moving on to another staple glute exercise if you think these will not be programmed you must be joking and you must be playing about the gains because these will always be programmed we have the rear foot elevated split squat now when it comes to these i know that the foot placement that back foot i've read all the comments from my previous videos about how are your toes that scrunched up now funny enough a lot of people can actually <laughs> do this so y'all trying to make you feel weird this is actually perfectly normal however if you cannot have your foot this way you can change it up you can either use a bench or you can use the pad on the hamstring curl or you can use a very low barbell and then add a pad and you'll still get the same um, movement. So you have your foot lying flat instead of scrunched up like this. Okay, so when it comes to this exercise, stability is very important because this is what's going to allow you to do the exercise properly. So when you do this, focus on stability. So drop the dumbbell first, start without the weight and work on your stability. It looks different for everybody because our mobility is different. So don't um, feel some type of way if it doesn't look the, the way that it does for everybody else. What's most important is for you to find that sweet spot, that position that allows you to perform this movement at your maximum depth, so where you get the best range of motion. Now, how to do the exercise? What you want to focus on is slightly leaning forward because then that allows us to get more glutes and less of the quads. When you stand upright and have your torso upright, that is more quads. So leaning forward allows us to target more of the glutes. And you want to make sure that your shin is mostly vertical hinging at the hips to work your glute muscles and drive through the floor using the front leg perform these as a drop set and you'll come back to thank me now let's move on to the glute bridge this is another hip hinge movement and when you include a bridge or thrust into your glute workouts this is where we work the glutes in the shortened position which basically means we're working the glutes in the most contracted position if you're on my guys you probably already noticed that i programmed quite a lot of these 
um yeah thank me in eight weeks okay <laughs> so with these you want to position the dumbbell or the bar on the hip crease and you want to make sure that at the top of the movements your shins and your thighs are at a 90 degree angle so when you come up you want to make sure that they are aligned into a 90 degree angle and i like to think of it as think ice cream scoop like think of an ice cream when you scoop the ice cream that you want to, that's what you want to do with it you want to scoop because then that allows you to tuck in your pelvis and not use your lower back to hold the weight so think of it as an ice cream scoop i promise it helps um so when you come up you want to brace with each rep and you want to squeeze your glutes into the flexed position i like to hold it for about two seconds at the top in that flexed position for more glute burn period and if your exercise looks anything like this I need us to fix that today, okay, babes? Today, <laughs> because you should not be lying on the bench. You need to be against the bench, your back against that bench or the box, of which I would not use the bench because it seems to be too high. So you want to look for something that's a lot shorter, as well as it is important to remember that should, your, should you be feeling more hamstrings, that means that your feet are too far out and you're feeling more quads, that means your feet are too close to your glutes so you need to place them in a way in a position where it allows you to feel your glutes in their most contracted position and basically where you actually feel those glutes burning as you work them and if you feel any discomfort with having the dumbbell or the barbell on your hip crease you can place a pad underneath it we are then going to move on to again these are all just my favorite exercises guys you know i just love training glutes <laughs> One of my favorite glute exercises, the sumo squat. Now with this, because it is a sumo squat, that means that your feet are far out wide, so more than shoulder width apart. And you want to um, have external rotation at the hip, so point your toes out wide. And it's very easy to feel this movement. Look at that gym shop top. Listen, it's making my back look way too good. Okay, back on track. Um, you want to focus this in the glutes and you want all the tension to be in the glutes. So you want to make sure that you tuck in your pelvis. Do not arch your back to point out or to stick out your glute muscles, your booty. You don't want to do that. Tuck in your pelvis. And as you initiate the movement going down, you want to push your feet against the ground. So basically like you're pushing the ground away. And I like to go heavy for these because I feel them most at the shelf of my glutes. You want to make sure that you're not rounding your back because then this takes the tension off of your glutes and puts all of it in your back. That's where you're going to feel some lower back pain. As well as, I know it can be tempting to look at that booty in the mirror and you're like, let me take a peek. We're going to take a peek a little bit later. For now, I need you to tuck in your chin and keep your head as demonstrated on screen so that you keep a neutral spine and focus all the tension in your glute muscles. A big one is to practice muscle to mind connection with this exercise because this will also work your abductors as much as it works your glutes. But as you perform this movement, make sure that you're focusing the tension on those glute muscles. Drive your hips back as you perform this exercise, but do not arch, do not confuse that with arching your back. And I promise you, you will be looking like this after that exercise. If you're not looking like this, then I need you to get on a program ASAP because clearly we're not working hard enough and you must be having us confused thinking we're trying to play games here, okay? We're getting on those glute games and that's on period. <laughs> this one day when i was really sick and i haven't stopped having it so it's just ginger and lemonade so i'm gonna pour that into a glass absolutely obsessed with lemonade like always been but like this is with ginger every day for some reason it tastes better when i'm sick but it does mm. it's a lot more pulpy than the last time Anyways, 
let's get to make breakfast. So, here are the croissants. Um, these are just uh, butter croissants, so very so plain croissants. And then we're gonna stuff them with everything that I can find that I can put in. So like lettuce, we're gonna do egg, we're gonna do bacon, we're gonna do some cottage cheese. I put, I like to, so in the mornings, if I don't have oats, um, I either have oats or have sandwich kind of vibe, like what I'm about to make, or I'll just do a smoothie. This time we're gonna do both um, the croissant. So you wanna add more protein into your foods. Whenever you're thinking about, okay, I need to eat high protein, don't think what can I take out? Or even when you think um, I want to, I have to eat healthier. It's not what can I take out of my foods? I need to remove this, I need to stop eating this, I need to cut out this. Try to think of it as what can I add into my foods or into my meals to make them a lot more nutritious. That's how I like to think of it. And that way you are still eating foods that you enjoy, but a lot more nutritious. So for example, with the sandwich, really could have just been a sandwich with just bacon and egg. But then you think, okay, what can I add into it to make it a lot more delicious, of course, but also to make it a lot more, oh God, I like this cramp. My hands are like cramping. I don't know if it's because of like being on my phone, um, to make it a lot more nutritious. So we're gonna add cottage cheese into this. Here, we're gonna melt our butter. When it comes to the egg, I'm not a fan of Genuinely, if you don't know this by now, with the number of times I've made eggs on this channel, I don't know. Um, I do not like soggy eggs. I don't do soggy, I don't do wet, I don't do runny, I don't do none of that because. So, I like my eggs um, hard, uh, so I'm going to cook it for the longest of time. We're going to do two eggs. Something that I think is important and worth mentioning that I've been seeing a lot of is, of course, we say we should eat a lot more protein because we're trying to build muscle and all of that. I think it's important to also give the reminder that adding more protein into your diet does not mean that you neglect all the other nutrients because they work hand in hand. That's where we get the balanced part of it, the balanced diet part of it. So if you're eating 90% protein, you're diet or how you eat has no fiber in it first of all you're going to be really bloated for most of the time because you need to be still getting in your fiber with all that protein that you're taking in and you still need to get get in your vitamins you still need to get in your minerals you still need to get in your carbs because again carbs are never the enemy calories are what you need to focus on 
so you still need to be getting all the other nutrients because they're just as important for you to look the way that you want to look for the physique that you're trying to build but also just for your general well-being and your health so in trying to include more protein in your diet as you hear most people say to do so try to also balance it out by getting in all the other nutrients they are important for your body and for your health i then went on to make a smoothie i'm such a smoothie girly like any day i think i make a smoothie every day like i (laughs) am a smoothie girly because it's so simple it's so quick it's so easy and with the smoothie i had berries in there i also had a banana which is my source of carbs and then i also had moringa leaf powder which i'm going to list all the benefits of moringa on here it's a top tier um plant that you should be adding into your drinks or into your supplements and this is just um straight moringa leaf grinded and nothing added into it which i absolutely love but when you add this powder it's important to remember that when you put green right if you're having like strawberries and things like that sometimes the green will overpower the strawberries and then you're going to get a brown smoothie now i didn't want that so that's why i only added just a little bit because that brown smoothie don't be giving and for me to eat (laughs) to enjoy the food it has to give on the look so yeah but it's a really good um supplement to add into your smoothies i also added oat milk this has canola oil in it now i like to go for oat milk because it has the highest protein content out of all the other milk is it milk or milk yeah um but it doesn't really matter because they're all high in protein anyway so you can go with regular milk um, cow milk or whatever milk you've got it still works and then i added chia seeds for the fiber and then i thought "Mm -hmm, okay let's add apple i don't eat apple but i will eat it for the gains you know we gotta do what we gotta do so i added the apple in there as long as i cannot taste it i think i'm good and yeah we blend that up and that is what went with my breakfast and when you have your smoothie if she's giving thick like mine is you can always add water to make it um less thick yeah <laughs> okay so that's breakfast done here is a sandwich so we've got egg lettuce bacon and cottage cheese i already tasted but we're gonna pretend i haven't tasted and here we go Is my smoothie over there? Mm. Mm. I put a lot of peanut butter. <clears throat> so I can tell you now, I'm living testimony of that. Working hard in the gym and not eating enough is not going to give you the gains that you think it's going to give you. You might look a little lean because you were training, but you would actually get to your goals if you ate for your goals. So making sure like in a standard meal, I always, even if when I'm having a smoothie for most of my meals, I always try to include protein in every single meal. So as you can see here, we, we have the egg as the protein. We also have protein in the cottage cheese. We have our carbs in the croissant. There's a butter croissant, so there's also fats in there. We also have our lettuce, which has our vitamins. And then we also have the bacon, which is more protein, lots of protein, but also balancing it out here. And I like to have my vegetables mostly in in their most raw form. So if I don't have to cook them, even better. That's the best way to eat them. So if you're trying to eat to build muscle as well as for fat loss to lose fat, you have to make sure that what's most important is your choice of foods. It's not necessarily how much, it's the most important thing becomes the choices that you're making and what kind of foods you're having because you can get your 2,000 calories from crappy food. By crappy, I just mean, you know what I'm talking about, from crappy food and get 2,000 calories from good foods or foods that would do much more good for your body. These two people that are eating differently are not going to look the same. Although they're eating the same amount of calories, what this one's going to look like and what this one's going to look like are two different things. And so your choice of food matters. What you eat matters. It doesn't have to be fancy. It doesn't have to be expensive, all of that. This is literally an egg, bacon. You can switch the bacon for ham or you can eat out egg, lettuce, a bun or bread. You get what I'm saying? Um, This is too good, I'm not going to lie. The kind of person that struggles to eat and you don't like your smoothies thick, Try to go for, try to add more water or more liquids into your smoothies. 
more water or more liquids into your smoothies because then it's gonna make them less thick. I like them thick because it makes me like <laughs> she get them thick. Not everyday oats. Like, let me tell you something. Not everyday oats. I'm gonna finish this off and then we'll come back for lunch. Bye. So I'm gonna show you guys um, the vitamins that I take after I eat. I take vitamin C, then I take iron tablets uh, because uh, I'm an anemic babe. Then I also have multivitamins. I take these ones, these are for women specifically. And these are the supplements that I take right now, including pre-workout. I do take pre-workout. But like I always say, it's always best to receive your supplements from real food first. And then if you do need to supplement, then you can look into these and see what you would need, as it may be different for everyone. Now, moving on to lunch. I like to keep lunch very simple, although I enjoy cooking. Um, I like to keep it very simple. So we're making a very easy and simple wrap, which consists of about probably five ingredients. I learned this trick from my mom. You know when the spice cannot, like it's stuck inside and then use the other one to rub, it works like a charm. Um, but yeah, a very simple wrap. I may not put the salt in when I, I, I notice that I always leave out the part where I add the salt. Please trust and believe that there's salt in all this food, okay? Um, yeah, let's get to cooking. Something about the way that you talk to me Even when you're not around I feel you, boy I feel you, boy Take with your love and your energy Perhaps it was the way that you smile I see you, boy Oh, I need you, boy
and for dinner we kept it simple and we went with white rice which you can switch for quinoa if you want something that has more protein or you can have bap with it or you can have couscous or a pasta whatever you would like to have it with and then i just made a simple stir fry and i also did some cinnamon butternut on the side and this was too good honey this was too good and that brings me to the end of the video i officially hit my 100th order this week and i launched the programs on sunday absolutely insane super grateful for every single one of you and i cannot wait till you come back and tell me about those games girl or guy and um thank you so much for watching and i hope you have a beautiful day or night cheers bye don't forget to subscribe <laughs>